Hello YouTubers. This video is a small demo on how to create TCP connection between two PLCs in user program. This example is based on my previous video, link to it you can find in the description. Let's take a look at our task. We have two PLCs. And we want to establish TCP connection between them. Both PLCs should be connected to the same network. We will need to set the port for both devices, and one of them should be active partner, that will initialize connection. It can be done in the Net Pro. But our task is to create connection in the user program. For that task function block FB55, IP config will be used. You will find more detailed explanation on how to set up IP address in the user program in my previous video. Let's take a look at the configuration data block. Configuration data block structure looks like as follows, DB identifier, it has to be 1. System data for CP. And connections. Each field consists of parameter fields and subfields. Each subfield consists of individual parameters. Let's have a look at the structure of the connection field. First goes type of the field. Its value must be 1. Next field stands for ID. Here the ID of the connection will be set. This value must be specified for AG send and AG receive. Next, number of subfields, that will be used to configure the connection. Some fields are mandatory, some, optional. IP address of the partner. This subfield is mandatory. Local port number. This subfield is mandatory. Remote port number. This subfield is also mandatory. Connection name. This field is optional. Local mode. This field is also optional. K bus address. This field is meaningful for S7400 series. Connection establishment. This field is mandatory. Let's switch to the configuration data block. Here you can see the system data for the CP. DB type must be 1. System data type must be 0. System data ID must be 0 as well. Count of subfields, 3. 1 for IP address, 1 for subnet mask, and 1 for router. Each subfield length is 8 bytes. ID for IP address is 1. ID for subnet mask is 2, and ID for router IP is 3. Now let's switch to the configuration of the TCP connection. As you remember from the explanation, TCP connection fields are, type, ID, count of subfields, and some subfields, that can be mandatory or optional. In my example I am going to use only mandatory subfields. First field is type. Type is an identifier for the connection type. Value for the TCP connection is 1. If you add one more TCP connection, then again, you will need to set value 1 to the type. Other types are UDP which value is 2, ISO on TCP, and its value is 3, email, with a value 4, and FTP with value 1. Next field is ID. 
it's a connection reference. Value ranges are, 1 through 16 for S7 300 stations, and 1 through 64 for S7 400 stations. You can assign any value within given ranges, but this same value must be specified in AG send and AG receive. Count of subfields, here you need to specify how many subfields your connection will contain. In my example there are 6 subfields, IP of the partner, local port number, remote port number, local mode, K bus address, connection establishment. Subfield, IP address of partner. Set partner IP address here. ID of this subfield is 1. Length is 8 bytes, 4 bytes header and 4 bytes address. Subfield local port. Set the number of the local port, that will be used for TCP connection here. The ID of the subfield is 9, and length is 6, where 4 bytes are for header and 2 bytes for port number. Subfield remote port. Set here the number of the port of your partner, that will be used for TCP connection. The ID of the subfield is 10, and length is 6, 4 bytes for header and 2 bytes for port number. Subfield, local mode of the connection. Here you specify the connection mode. Possible values, send receive, FTP, S5 addressing mode for fetch write. Fetch. And write. The default value of this parameter is send receive. So, if you will not set it, then default value will be assigned automatically. The ID of the subfield is 19, and length is 5, 4 bytes for header and 1 byte for the mode. Subfield K bus address. This value is always set to 0 for C piece for the S7300 stations, and does not need to be specified, unless you are using S7400 station. The ID of the subfield is 21, and length is 5, 4 bytes for header and 1 byte for the address. Subfield Connection Establishment Here you specify whether connection is established by the station. Possible values are 0 or 1. 0 stands for passive connection, and 1 stands for active connection. The ID of the subfield is 22, and length is 5, 4 bytes for header and 1 byte for the mode. The observation of the configuration data block is finished, let's go the programming side. Switch the declaration view of your data block to the data view, and set the parameters as follows. After you set all the values, save your data block and download it to the CPU. To call the function block FB55, I will use the code from my previous video, where FB1 is used. Here I do call FB55, and assign DB104, where settings for CP are stored. You also need to change settings of IP address in hardware configuration. Open your hardware configuration, open the properties of the CP, switch to the tab of IP configuration, and select option, set IP address in user program. That enables to make changes to the IP address and create connections in user program. Let's test our connection. I have set the TCP connection on the other station by the S7. As you can see, connection established successfully. Let's write a program, that enables exchange of some data between those two PLCs. Again, I will use program fragment from my previous video. To send data to another PLC I am going to use function AG send. I have created data block DB6 for AG send parameters. Done indicates whether or not the job was completed without errors. Error indicates, 
that error arise during the execution. Status will help to determine the cause of the error. Error codes can be found in the help of the AG send block. I do call AG send in the OB1 on the regular time intervals. For that purpose, I have used the internal clock memory of the CPU. As I already mentioned, I do send data from the data block, created in my previous video. It contains some pseudo settings of the various motors. In another CPU, I do use data block with same structure. For receiving the data, I do use a function AG receive, which is programmed in the OB1. Let's test the application. First let's upgrade our AG receive call a little bit, so we could control it. Now let's open our data block online, to check if there are any values other than default zeros. Now let's try to enable the AG receive to get some values from the other CPU. Default values were updated with the ones, received from another CPU. Let's try to initialize the data block, and re-enable AG receive call. And again, values were updated with the ones from another CPU. So, we have managed how to set TCP connection in user program, and make data exchange between two CPUs. If you find this video useful, please like it, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and happy coding.